Hi there, thank you so much for joining me on this channel. As always, I'm very grateful for all your previous likes, views and subscriptions. We're going to spend some time thinking about Hinduism and a fantastic idea called Samsara, and I'm really intrigued by it. It's a core part of the Hindu tradition and faith, and I'm just really excited to be looking at it with you today. So let's have a little look. And uh, a good way to think about Samsara, an introduction, our gateway into it, is of course uh, through a film, as most of these things uh, end up being with me. Um, the Circle of Life, whether you're a fan of the 1994 uh, Lion King or the 2019. Uh, reimagining. It's all about the circle of life, uh, that terrific moment where baby Simba is presented to the animals on the plains of Africa and you have that score playing and the song circle of life. Well, and a moment as well where uh, Simba is explained uh, how everything goes round in terms of the cycle uh, by his father Mustafa. Um, it's actually a very useful way for us to understand samsara because samsara in hinduism is the journey of the atman the soul from one being to another effectively uh, when this life is over the atman journeys into uh, another being and i think first of all just wanted to say that it's far more nuanced than going from a caterpillar to a billionaire okay there are many subtle levels and as with all these videos i'm compacting and uh, trying to shorten these ideas uh, just to get them across as clearly as i can in my own bungling way but okay it is but it is many many subtle layers okay but the principle is the same that your at man goes from one being to another and one analogy which I found, which I just wanted to share with you, which is um, I thought was quite interesting and I think it's quite good. But then again, I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, but I thought, actually, why not let you uh, uh, ruminate on it? So think about the clothes you have. You change them. So whether you're going to do some painting and decorating, whether you're going to go out to a fancy restaurant, whether you're going to go uh, and do some kind of sport, you will change your clothes appropriately. You're still the same person. OK, uh, but you make sure that you're wearing the right attire for the right occasion. And there was this idea that uh, that's a way of thinking about samsara, that your at man is simply dressed up in different clothes in a different body. Um, so does this analogy work or can you think of a better one? Uh, maybe you can think of a better one. Uh, and actually, that's quite a useful thing to do. Uh, if you can think of your own analogies when thinking about uh, religious ideas, then it helps you to get under the skin of, of understanding uh, what those ideas are about. So I just wanted to, to show that to you. Uh, I mean, even now, I think uh, before I started the video, I thought it was quite a good idea. Now I'm not so sure. And I, I tend to flip flop around uh, on this one, but that's OK as well. OK, I'm just trying to understand some of these concepts. Um, you may have heard of the English translation of the word samsara, uh, simply called reincarnation. And reincarnation has entered uh, uh, our language and our culture, even if you're not religious, uh, which you always find uh, absolutely fascinating. Um, by the way, little warning, uh, I was googling away looking for some images of reincarnation there's some very strange images out there for reincarnation uh, and uh, some of them actually uh, I think not particularly helpful they don't really communicate the idea very well one that kept coming up was like the recycling symbol so reduce reuse recycle which I'm not entirely sure is particularly helpful um, so uh, in the end uh, I just decided to um, show you a little mini tangent here a little uh, uh, thing here which is the Om symbol, which is the sound of creation, the sacred sound in Hinduism. Uh, so um, I thought that was still appropriate because uh, we're talking about life and so forth. So that's the Om symbol. Yeah, but just please be careful when looking up stuff, uh, as always on the internet, but particularly for reincarnation. Um, so what mechanism is used? Uh, how do you know if you're going to come back? as a caterpillar or a kangaroo? What is the, uh, the decision-making process? I think that's a very good point. Well, karma, uh, and those of you may remember Karma Chameleon, some by Boy George on a paddle steamer, and I don't know what they were doing on the paddle steamer, but um, karma is when your good actions equal good consequences and your bad actions equal bad consequences. And 
that sort of lang that sort of idea has entered into our language, isn't it? So what goes around comes around. Um, uh, do good and good will happen unto you. Okay, it's perhaps been mixed up with other religions and other cultural ideas. Uh, but I love this little graphic here, can't we? You get what you do. Okay, and I think that's a very uh, it's a lovely illustration uh, of the concept of karma, but just need to deepen it a little bit more. I think what's interesting is that um, with Hinduism, you need to say hey, you're not judged at the end of your life, uh, your Atman, the law of karma just is. You're not judged by God or gods or by angels. Okay, karma just is. It's like the law of gravity. Okay, it, it doesn't discriminate. Okay simply your actions are judged uh, accordingly taken into account okay and uh, so I think that's fascinating because what that means is, is that your uh, actions are essentially uh, influencing where your at man will go not an uncommon idea in religions that what you do in your life echoes in eternity to quote gladiator but um, there's no heaven or hell in Hinduism. So you are responsible for your Atman. You are responsible for the welfare of your soul. You have custody of it. You have to cherish it and you have to make sure that your behaviour is appropriate okay, uh, to achieve, because there is an end game in Hinduism, to achieve what's known as moksha which is release and it's a beautiful illustration here of a butterfly and you want to uh, be released you want to achieve moksha you want to break free of samsara and become one with brahman the supreme being the ultimate deity in hinduism and um, one of the clues that we have to this or uh, uh, a rite of passage which really goes to the heart of uh, samsara a hindu funerals they always involve cremation and this is so that atman is free to migrate free to go uh, to its next body or uh, hopefully moksha and obviously there's uh, practical reasons as well why cremation is useful in hinduism in India is where the country where Hinduism originated from is very very hot and you need to make sure that you deal quickly and respectfully uh, with bodies in the heat but also um, it's fascinating as well because um, think about how you can contrast it with other rituals in other faiths so for example uh, particularly in Islam it's very important that you that the body uh, is retained and intact uh, to make sure for um, the, the day of judgment okay but in hinduism you don't need the body okay you're going to get another one okay uh, and as the atman uh, travels it will go to uh, another body so um, i think that's really helpful as well and of course it's the idea of fire and symbolism and purity and maybe that's something we'll have a look at on another video so just have a think about that and i do hope that's given you uh, something to uh, hopefully uh, give you a bit more security in terms of understanding samsara as always uh, i am very very grateful for you watching if you are able to uh, then please uh, chat amongst yourselves if you can like and subscribe but most importantly enjoy your learning